Hey guys, Andy Slosser from Positive Motorsports here with another tech tip for Kart 360 from Sarno at the Rotax Grand Finals. Today we're going to go through some of the data that we logged here so I can show you how to get faster and better and learn how to use some of the tools baked into Race Studio Analysis. The second part is going to be a little more in depth and it'll help you get more data out of your Micron 4 or 5 system. After downloading your data using either Race Studio 2 for a Micron 4 with a data key or Race Studio 3 and Wi-Fi download with a Micron 5, you're greeted with this screen in Race Studio Analysis. This is where all of your tests are stored in the central region. Up here, you have selection criteria, which lets you narrow down by track, driver, or if you go in and define them, also vehicle championship and test type. For the most part in karting, we really only use track and driver. To open a test, simply double click it. So you agree with this screen now, and we have to do a little bit of housekeeping to make sure everything's usable. The first thing that we have to do is disable the outlap and any not at pace laps. This helps make sure that our theoretical laps are good and concise and actually give us relevant data. If you want to select multiple laps, it's just like using Excel, shift click and disable lap. So now we're left with only competition laps. The next step is actually going in and building the track map. Do this click map and then new. The first thing that I do is I usually rotate the track so that it is as if I'm standing on mechanic stand. So at Sarno, the mechanic stand sits right here along this short chute. So you grab this slider and rotate it until it's oriented as you want it. Name the track. I'm going to name this one Sarno RMC World Finals. There are a couple modes that you can actually use for building the track map. You can use two wheels, just speed and gyro, or four wheels, speed and lateral acceleration. Two wheels works better for karting. There are some technical reasons that we really don't need to get into, but you can see that the four wheels map does not actually look like Sarno, and the two wheels is much closer. If you're really not happy with the track shape, you can tweak it using track shape, channels, threshold, and corner identify, but usually two wheels spits out a really good map. Next step to actually making sure your track map is usable with your theoretical laps is by is removing all of the sectors. Whenever you get so many sectors, your theoretical app becomes so convoluted and difficult to discern that it's really not even helpful anymore. So what I would like to do is make this first flat out turn and pull down the straightaway one big sector. You can see based on this blue line, this blue line is your speed trace. So whenever it has big drops like this, you can know that that's a braking zone. So what I'll usually do is go right up to the braking zone and divide the track right there. Now this whole section really runs itself all together until you get to this hairpin right here. So I'm going to make that a middle sector and same thing as before, get to the breaking point and divide again. And I'm just going to leave this last sector as a big one. A lot of times I'll use more than three sectors. I'll use five to seven, but it's good to start out just using three. That way you don't get so much information that it makes everything too muddled and confusing for you to actually properly use. So an important thing to do is make sure that your color coordinated just makes it easier to read. You click where it says corner two, straight or corner one to toggle the colors. I'll use straight for this big section, corner two for this middle sector, and corner one for this last one. It's a matter of personal preference. It doesn't actually affect your map. And then just click OK to save it. Now go to Map, Map Manager and scroll down until you find Sarno RMC World Finals and double click it to load it. So now that you've disabled all of your non-competition laps, click this little white box with the blue and red lines in it. That's the split time analysis, or as the helpful pop-up says, you can use Control F6. So here, we're actually looking at our individual sector times. In this first sector, you can see that we have pretty tight deviation. There's not a lot of variation within there. Same with the middle sector and the last. This is reflected in our actual theoretical lap time, which is if you took all of your best sectors and strung them together. So that is a 1084 versus our actual on-track lap, which is a 1086. Our rolling lap, which is our best sectors put in a line, but not necessarily at start finish, is also a 1086, which is awesome. Typically, whenever you're involved in really tight racing, the rolling lap can help you discern what your actual best lap on track was. It helps negate passes a little bit on track, going through traffic. It just makes it a little bit easier to discern what your true lap time is, so to say. 
Your theoretical best, you often want to have within two tenths, especially on a three sector map. As you get into five and seven or more complex tracks, that can become bigger, and especially in racing situations, that can become bigger because it's hard to hit your perfect marks every lap whenever you're involved with other drivers on track. That's the backbone, and actually looking at your split time analysis, we're going to be we're going to jump from this and actually use more of the split time analysis in the next step whenever we look at actual lap comparison next time in our two-part series from Sarno. I'm Andy Slosser from Positive Motorsports, and stay positive.